Hello, my dear students, and welcome to your biology class, right? This is your teacher, Cosmo Robalino. And today, we are going to talk about osmosis, a very interesting uh, process that happens all the time in living things, such as plants, animals, and obviously people. It's an important aspect of life that we need to understand. So uh, today we are not going to use the PowerPoint. We are going to experiment with something a little different. It's called Prezi presentation. So I hope you really enjoy it. Okay. So what is osmosis? Let's find out, shall we? So osmosis, a useful research. So the objective for today is to define osmosis and explain exactly how water moves in and out of a cell. So we know that the cell is the unit, is the minimum unit with life, with all the functions, such as reproduction, respiration, and so on. And here in this um, graph, we have a, something that we are going to break down little by little. Okay, uh, by the end of this presentation, you will have identified the main steps of osmosis and how to do that in a little experiment. Okay, okay, so let's go on. What are the key words for our presentation today? Well, concentration. Concentration is the amount of a substance in a mixture. That means how much of a substance is present in that mixture. Okay, it, so it takes two elements, right? What is the membrane? If you remember our cell model, the membrane is a thin sheet that surrounds cells and controls which substances, including water, go in and out of them. So the, the membrane protects the cell and it also uh, controls, let's say, the traffic of substances, especially water and others, like, for example, viruses. Permeable, what is that? That means that uh, it allows liquids and gases to pass through. Only liquids and gases, and maybe, maybe small particles, right? Solute is a substance dissolved in water, and solvent is a liquid in which a substance is dissolved. So for example, if you have water and sugar, water is the solvent, and solute is, I'm sorry, water is the solvent, and sugar is the solute, right? Okay, so solute and solvent. Next, uh, key concepts. What are the key concepts that we have today? Well, osmosis is the movement of a solvent, such as water, from a high to a low concentration. So we have, uh, number one, we have, we have a solvent, and its sol solvent moves from a high to a low concentration. We're going to see that in more detail. Osmosis is a naturally occurring process. That means it happens in nature, in all living things, like we said before. And, all, and it takes place across cell membranes. Okay, that's where it takes place, at the level of the cell membrane. And osmosis is an important process in all living organisms, because without osmosis, we wouldn't have life, right? We have said that water is essential for life, okay? So let's go to the definition of osmosis. So what is it? Well, let's see. Before we talk osmosis, let's talk about diffusion. Okay. Diffusion is the movement of a substance from an area 
where it is in high concentration to an area of lower concentration. For example, if you see here uh, the glass on the left of the image, the particles are in high concentration. But on the second part, on the right, then the, diff the diffusion means that these particles have been distributed in this volume of liquids. Uh -huh. So it says here that if you put sugar in a cup of tea, for example, the sugar will diffuse through the liquid until it's evenly distributed and the tea is sweet, right? So first, the, the particles of, in this example, if the particles of sugar are very concentrated. But then through diffusion, uh, it is spread all across the glass of water, right? And so it's evenly distributed. That is diffusion, okay? So let's go to the next part. So osmosis is one example of diffusion and it's a passive process. Osmosis is the diffusion of a solvent such as water, right? But it could be, for, for example, vinegar, alcohol, right? From an area that is has a higher concentration of a solute, such as sugar, to an area that has a lower concentration of the solute. So here again, in this glass of water, we have a small concentration of a substance, right? The red particles, right, are highly concentrated at the top of the glass. But with time, okay, with time, the particles have been spread, have been distributed in the glass of water, right? So we say that osmosis is a passive process because no energy is needed for osmosis to occur, right? So our conclusion is that osmosis is a passive process. No energy is needed. Okay, let's move on. The membrane. We were talking about the membrane. A very important part in this process. Well, osmosis takes place across the cell membrane of all living things. Cell membranes are partially permeable, partially, not completely, and, not, and they are not impermeable either, right? Well, that means that they allow some substances to pass through them, but they don't allow other substances to pass through them. The holes in the membrane permit water molecules to pass through them, right? So the water molecules can go through, but these uh, holes or these pores, if you like, are too small to allow many larger molecules through, right? So if the molecules are too large, then they just cannot go through the membrane, right? And cell membranes, also allow solutes to enter or exit the cell. And so you can say that without a cell membrane, cells couldn't keep vital substances inside and toxic materials outside, right? This is how the cell can make decisions about which substances go in and which substances don't go in, right? Because if it's detected to be toxic, then it will not make it into the cell. Okay, let's go on. What's next? Well, we have been talking about photosynthesis. And when we talk about photosynthesis, osmosis maintains an ideal concentration of water and other substances inside the cell because it helps transport nutrients in and move waste out. You see, when the cell is done uh, processing the nutrients, then it has to transport the waste out of the cell. 
right? So the nutrients get in and the waste gets out. Now, without osmosis, no cell could continue to function. Yeah, there is no way, right? Because there is no nutrition. So osmosis is also vital, is vital for plants because it allows them to absorb water from the soil and transport it up to their leaves. Yeah, remember we saw the diagram, right, where the roots absorb the water from the underground. Yeah, and in the leaves, it, uh, where it is used in the production of food via photosynthesis. And well, we know that they absorb the carbon dioxide, the sunlight, and the water, and then they produce sugar um, or glucose stored in form of starch and they release oxygen, right? Okay, so you see photosynthesis is essential to, our, um, to all living creatures, right? And obviously we're talking about plants, but we know that plants are the primary producers, right? We as uh, consumers cannot produce any kind of energy. We only consume it. Okay, so let's go to the next part, right? Life on Earth. Plants would not be able to survive without osmosis, like we can see here in the picture, right? Well, this is a simplified a version of the osmosis, right? I mean, of the photosynthesis, and obviously it shows osmosis. And since they form the base of all food chains, aha, this is what we have been talking about, no other life forms would survive either, right? So this is the base. This is the base. This is the core, right, of all food chains and food webs you see plants are so are crucial right this is the adjective i was looking for plants are crucial to both food chains and food webs so as a consequence osmosis is essential for maintaining life on earth and this is why the environmentalists are so worried about life on earth because the moment we don't have plants who's going to how are we going to get the energy how are we going to get the oxygen there's no way right there's no way around okay so let's move on now uh, we are going to watch a video right which is going to explain exactly how this process takes place and then i'm going to explain an experiment that you can conduct in your own house okay so let's go to the uh, to the video Can you smell that delicious cake? Have you ever wondered why your fingers prune in water, or how plants manage to take up nutrients from the soil? All of these things require the movement of substances by either diffusion, osmosis, or active transport. In this two-part series, we're going to discover how cells take in useful substances and remove waste using these three methods of transport. The exchange of materials occurs between cells and their environment across the cell membrane. To make this exchange as efficient as possible, some organisms have evolved specialized exchange surfaces, like the alveoli in the lungs, or root hairs in plants, or the nephrons in kidneys. Depending upon what is being exchanged and which direction along the concentration gradient things are traveling, will determine whether diffusion, osmosis, or active transport will be used. Let's start with diffusion. The lovely smells of the cake spread around the room by diffusion. Diffusion is the process in which particles spread out from each other. 
they move from high concentration, so right by the cake, to an area of low concentration, so everywhere else in the room. In diffusion, particles move down the concentration gradient until they are evenly distributed. For particles to move like this, they need to be a gas or particles of a dissolved substance. Diffusion is seen throughout nature and allows substances to pass into or out of cells across the cell membrane. But they must be dissolved and there must be a concentration gradient that they can move from high concentration to low concentration. Gas exchange in the lungs, so oxygen moving from the alveoli into the blood and carbon dioxide from the blood into the alveoli, are both great examples of diffusion. Carbon dioxide moving from the air into the leaves of plants also moves by diffusion, but it doesn't have to be a gas. How digested foods like amino acids move from the small intestine into the blood also moves by diffusion. You can also have facilitated diffusion, where the movement is still down the concentration gradient, but special carrier proteins are required to enable the movement. Glucose and ions need carrier proteins to move across the membrane. Osmosis is very similar to diffusion, but just for water. It is the movement of water into or out of a cell. Again, it is the movement from a dilute solution, so high concentration of water molecules, down the concentration gradient to a more concentrated solution, so low concentration of water molecules. The water molecules move across a partially permeable membrane. Water molecules move at random, so some do go back across the membrane. But the overall net effect is that there is movement to the more concentrated side, or the side with less water, until equilibrium is reached, or until there is no net movement of water anymore. Osmosis out of a cell can cause big changes. Animal cells shrivel up, and in plant cells the membrane and cytoplasm shrink away from the cell wall, causing the cell to become flaccid. And if osmosis causes lots of movement of water into the cell, plant cells swell and become turgid. They have a strong cell wall which prevents them from bursting, whereas animal cells don't have a cell wall, and so they burst. The absorption of water by plant roots and the absorption of water in the small intestine and the colon all use osmosis. So we know all about the movement of gases and water, but what is active transport for? Watch part 2 to learn about active transport. Okay, so as the video was saying, osmosis happens both in our organism and also in the plant's organisms, right? Okay, so now, uh, well, we did that. And now we are going to see what you could do to, um, to conduct an experiment, okay? So let's go through the steps and you will be able to do it in your own house. Okay, so the ingredients that you need are just six of them. Two eggs, um, water, two glasses or jars, uh, bigger than, the, than an egg, obviously, a vinegar, sugar, and a pen. I'm sure you can find all these ingredients in your house. They should be available to you easily. All right, so these are the ingredients. Take note because now we are going to the next step, which is the uh, uh, preparing the egg, right? Okay, so uh, the first step is to remove the shell from the egg. First, we need, um, we need to remove the shell to expose the semi-permeable membrane of the egg. So, how do you do that? Well, you simply put the or submerge the eggs in vinegar for about 24 hours, okay? 24 hours a day. So uh, not overnight, but I would say um, if you put it on, on a Monday, yeah, check it out on Tuesday evening or even on Wednesday. So after this time, rub gently and under uh, running water to remove the shell. Okay, so I'll take it to the sink. Um, and under running water, remove the shell. Now, attention, if some shell still remains, put it back in the vinegar for a couple more hours, okay? 
Yeah, no problem with that. You can just wait around until you get something similar to what you see on the image, right? Okay, very good. Now, what is next? Well, next, we need to make a concentrated solution. And to do this, you're gonna stir some sugar into a glass of water. A couple of tablespoons should work perfectly, okay? So you don't have, you don't need too much sugar, right? You don't need too much sugar. All right, so um, this is the first glass. In the second glass, you just add plain water. That's all you need. Then you add an egg to each glass and leave it for about 24 hours. What's going to happen? Can you think? Can you predict? Attention. How the, the egg in water sinks to the bottom of the glass while the one in the sugar solution floats? floats. Well, this is because the sugar solution is more dense than the water. That's right. Okay. So our egg in the water expanded while the egg in sugar solution shrank, as you can see on the picture, right? On the top picture. If you prick the egg from the water with a fine needle and you are going to watch a jet of water shoot out, right? Like in the second picture. Yeah, the second picture shows the spring of water. And how do you think you could rehyd rehydrate your shrunken egg? Okay, I'll explain in a minute, okay? The question is, why does the egg grow and shrink? Well, our concentrated solution was the sugar solution. The dissolved sugar molecules cannot pass through the semi-permeable membrane of the egg, but the smaller water molecules can, right? Water moves from the less concentrated egg solution to the more concentrated sugar solution until the equilibrium is reached. Therefore, water moves from the egg to the sugar solution via osmosis, shrinking the egg as the water leaves it. Now, um, to, to answer your, your question, to rehydrate the egg, place it into plain water. In this instance, the concentration of the liquid inside the egg is higher than that of the water, so water moves from the water to the egg. When we pricked the egg soaked in water, water shoot out of the egg. Why is that? Well, because the egg had absorbed the water, increasing the pressure inside it. Now, why does the egg shell dissolve in vinegar at the beginning of the experiment? Well, two things. One, the eggshell dissolves in the vinegar as the acetic acid in the vinegar reacts to the calcium carbonate of the shell. And carbon dioxide is given off during this reaction, so you should see bubbles of gas. Okay, there you go. So today we have been, uh, we have been studying the process called osmosis. And we have seen that it happens both in plants, animals, and why not people. Please uh, keep in mind that you should, uh, you should be able to ask questions next time we see each other on, in our online meetings. Until then, please take care and I will see you around.